welcome to Ultimate Survival Gear. Today, as you guys can see for the very first time on the channel, I have something from Rockport. Now, uh, I have been reviewed, uh, I mean, reviewed. Now, I haven't been reviewed, but I have been asked to review this particular brand for quite some time. So here you guys go. This is the brand new Rockport XCS Spruce Peak Hiking Boot. And here we go, we have it finally on this channel. Now it is uh, waterproof, it is pretty comfortable, but I do have some major complaints to it. Uh, all the links for this product, uh, for this particular one is just the Amazon links, are in the description below. And you probably noticed just a little bit of a word of kind of an update on my channel. You probably noticed that on some of the reviews, I also put additional links now to other besides the Amazon, because I noticed that sometimes original websites, official websites for, for products, they have uh, cheaper prices. So check out all the links that are in the description below. Maybe you will be able to find something that is on the discount. Okay, so let's get into the review of this one. As some of you already know, this is not just a regular boot review. This review specifically for my Ultimate Survival Boots section. Yes, basically if this wasn't just your regular hiking boot, all right, um, something bad happened. Maybe you were hiking or maybe you had this in the house, something bad happened and now you had to survive in this. Um, survive, meaning that you have to wear it for extended periods of time without taking it off. You had to sleep in it, you had to climb in it, fight it, do whatever is necessary to survive. Would this be a good boot to survive? Well, how do we make the judgment? We make the judgment based on eight different criteria. Let's begin. Criteria number one, of course, the comfort level, one of the most important ones. And in order to test the comfort level of all the boots and shoes that I review on this channel, I do a three mile run and then a five mile walk, non-stop, no pauses in between. Um, and then I continue wearing the shoe or boot for the rest of the day so that the total wear time is eight hours without taking it off. Okay, like I said, this is pretty comfortable but there are a few major complaints. Let's start with the very first thing is the weight. Let's get that out of the way because weight is very, very important, especially whenever it comes to comfort. If you want to be comfortable in your shoes or boots, you want something that is lightweight, obviously. This is size 10 and as you can see, 1771. Too bad it's not 1776, but uh, pretty close, 1771. It's really good weight, actually, um, <laughs> all jokes aside. Uh, 17 is pretty good for a mid-sized boot. Um, to kind of give you reference numbers, you want to look for something that is under 20 ounce, okay? If you want something lightweight. The more under 20 ounce it is, the lighter it's going to be. If it's 21, 22 ounce, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily heavy, but now you are getting into that heavier category where now you're starting to feel the fatigue from the weight. So weight wise, this is pretty good. Another factor that contributes to comfort level is the flexibility of the outsole. And here, as you can see, it is very, very flexible. So again, pretty good. Good job, Rockport. Let's move on to the inner sole. I'm gonna try to take it out and show to you what it looks like. Let's see if I can grab it. There we go, come on. Tana, check this out. And uh, actually, I have to say, this is a very, very good inner sole. Uh, there's a decent heel bed. There's a decent, not uh, kind of flimsy, but okay, R support, not a big deal. What I really like about it is that there is extra cushioning in the heel area here. So you definitely do have decent amount of impact protection. It helps a lot. Uh, on the longer hikes and if you in case if you do need to run definitely helpful as well once you remove it It goes straight into the midsole well besides the little fabric covers, but there is no more impact protection besides from the midsole Okay, now let's talk about the padding the tongue is padded pretty decent the shaft is not much not much of a padding in the shaft uh, it's it's cut it covers your ankles, but not much really padding for comfort and then going throughout the whole boot um, it's very nice and soft from the inside, except the very, very front. This is kind of hard from the inside, so make sure to get it in the right size. Very important. Okay, done with the comfort level. Overall on the comfort level, this is pretty good. So no major complaints there at all. Let's move on to the criteria number two now. Proofing and protection. Yes, this is waterproof, but here we get into one I would say pretty, in my eyes, it might not be as bad for you, but for me, it's pretty major problem. Okay, let's start with this. So we have our shaft and our shaft here is 
five and a half inches. Okay, so we have the lowest point of the shaft at five and a half inches. Okay, that's good. That's really, really good for a mid-size boot. But we got our waterproofing here, gusseting, as you can see, about here. And it goes even less than that, but it goes only to about four and a half barely inches, maybe even less. So basically, Rockport, they kind of, for no reason, did not utilize the whole inch of waterproofing clearance. It's not a huge deal, but to me, it's like, why are you wasting the whole inch and now you just have the four and a half this much, which is pretty much the size of a regular shoe. So now you have a mid-sized boot with only a regular shoe size waterproofing, all right? Kind of a little bit weird. Again, for some of you guys, it might not be a big deal, but that's why I do the reviews so I can point all of these little things. Protection wise, pretty good. Uh, this right here, reinforcement of the fire. Again, the toe is tough, very soft. So don't, don't be, uh, don't expect it to be something, you know, amazing. Don't drop anything on your toe because you're going to feel it. But you do have some reinforcement here. Uh, the heel is fairly soft, so not much there. And because there is not much padding in the shaft, not much auto protection there as well. Overall, okay, but still not not as good as it could have been. Let's move on to the criteria number three now, quality and the design features. Now, quality-wise, Rockboard seems like a decent brand, decent reviews on Amazon. People seem to buy them and like them. They're, they're, they're kind of budget-friendly. Um, and so far, seems like quality-wise, except one major problem, which we'll talk about in the next criterion, um, there isn't really much to complain. Now, the... Whenever it comes to the design features here, I talk about the lacing system, and this is one of my complaints. Um, not, a, not a huge complaint, but still pretty bad. So the lacing system here, as you can see, the strings are very nice and round, so the strings are good. But the hardware itself, whoever designed the hardware, did not really, I guess, maybe test it or understood the purpose of this metal hooks apart from holding the strings because you also have to be able to slide you see you have to be able to slide these strings through this hardware and here as you can see it is so hard to slide it actually damages the lace as you can see it, it damages it it makes it uh, kind of all fluffy and messed up because the ang the angles i guess the edges of this hardware here are so sharp. So whenever you're trying to tighten it, it's really, really hard to tighten it and it damages these. So overall, the lacing system is kind of a failure here. And it could have been good if the edges were a little bit smoother so that the strings could slide through without any problems. But I don't know, I, I guess it's like a huge design overlook. Another thing that I wanted to point out, obviously you notice four pairs of hooks here, one open pair of hooks here, which is fine, it works. Uh, for hiking boots, it's good, but I wanna ask, what the hell, What what is the purpose of this closed ring here? So if you wanna have all closed rings, which is completely fine, it's fine, there are plenty of boots like that, or if you want, you have two open hooks or just one open hook here, but not open hook and then at the very top, a closed ring makes absolutely no sense. Um, I guess Rockport is not very familiar with hiking boots as they should be, but okay, whatever. I'm not gonna complain too much about that. Let's move on to the criteria number four, outsole, traction and stability. And this is right here, the biggest complaint that I have, the outsole is unfreaking usable whenever it comes to anything hiking. Now, whenever I do my run and my walk, I do it on a variety of different surfaces. Older asphalt, newer tarmac, wet sand, dry sand, wet grass, dry grass, rocky road, trail surface, concrete, marble tile, rock wall, rubber. This is literally slippery on everything. Even on the asphalt, it feels kind of slippery because look, it's flat as a freaking glass. I don't know what Rockport was thinking, but this is just... This is unacceptable. You can't really call this a hiking boot and even for a normal walking boot, on marble and tile, all you're doing it really is figure skating. And God forbid there is a little bit of oil on that marble and tile, you will, you will, 
You're not, you, it's not gonna be you maybe go flying. You will go flying in this boot. I don't know who the hell designed this outsole. It's absolutely freaking terrible. What does it say here? True Tech. Well, if this is the signature for whoever designed it, True Tech, you did a terrible, terrible job with this outsole. I, I really am not sure what they were thinking because even these star kind, kind you know this this is pretty bad too because as you can see this these grooves they go inside so these little rocks will probably s get stuffed in there and you will never be able to take them out so outsole is a complete complete failure on this one unfortunately and moving on to the next criterion criterion number five here temperature um <clears throat> these are pretty good in the hot weather fairly breathable not too hot uh well depends on what you consider hot like if it's a hot summer day here in florida 90 some degrees yeah you're gonna overheat in these but mild temperatures decent not exactly a winter boot i would not recommend it as a winter boot at all first of all because of the outsole if it's snow or, or pff, ice man yeah, forget about it it's not 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 what you want uh but it's not insulated in any way so yeah not not very good for so i would say maybe autumn fall or uh, spring boot that probably be like two season boot let's move on to the criteria number six really quickly the sizing they are true to the size so no problems there get yourself half a size bigger than your normal shoe size so you have a little bit of extra space here at the front it will add to your comfort level now criteria number seven here is the uh, balance of application so if this was your ultimate survival boot would it be good to survive in um well it's comfortable, it's fairly lightweight, it's waterproof, the outsole is terrible, <laughs> the lacing system is pretty bad, but the biggest problem of course is the outsole. You want versatility. In your survival boot, you want versatility, you want to be able to walk on anything and everything, right? And do all of these different things and you, you really can't do anything with this outsole. So, I would not recommend this boot as an ultimate survival boot. I would not recommend it as a hiking boot either. The only thing maybe if you were getting it like a, I don't know, just your, your like walking boot. If you're walking, I don't know, on like a nice paved trail, that's kind of hiking. That's what you're doing. That's considered hiking for you. That's fine. I have nothing wrong with it. I, I'm not saying whatever if if this is they are fairly comfortable because the inner sole is great from the inside they feel pretty comfortable they kind of uh fit a little bit of a wider so if you prefer more space in the toe box you might like them but don't please don't try them on anything more or less serious no wet surfaces no slippery no grass no wet sand because you will go flying uh and the very last criterion here is criterion number eight the price price okay so Different colors, they start at $75. This particular one is 100 bucks. I don't know why. They have one in the middle for 90 bucks. It's just the difference is the color. That's it. Okay. For $100, you can get yourself... $100 is a good price. $75 is a good price for a boot. But for the same price, you can get yourself Columbia, um, Newton Ridge 2 Plus, I think that's the model. And they are the same exact price and they are phenomenal compared to this. They have excellent outsole. They have much better comfort level, much better waterproofing, much better lacing system, much better build quality, much better overall. So Rockport, if you guys are watching this video, you really, really need to step your game up because this is not gonna fly so let me know in the comments below guys what do you think about this review what do you think about this boot as you can see i never really tried to sell anything i don't really care if you click on the link and buy it after watching this review or not what i care about is to give you as honest as straight of an opinion as I possibly can plus I claim this channel to be ultimate survival gear right so what I'm reviewing is <clears throat> for your survival okay so I, I really don't want to see anyone get hurt because they get something that is not usable just because I wanted to sell you something and make commission on the product that I really do not recommend so if you appreciate that honesty if you appreciate this 
this approach to reviewing the products, which kind of hard to find these days on the internet, please consider subscribing because this is what I stand for on this channel. Uh, please consider joining the membership on this channel. Uh, it's only 99 cents a month, but it really, really helps me bring more and more quality stuff, quality reviews on this channel. Thank you very much guys for watching. Always appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next video.